What's good fam? Welcome back to Unlockable Character. We have quite a lot to talk about. It has been a crazy week for NVIDIA and stocks in general. <laughs> NVIDIA specifically has had 10% swings up and down, but if you've been buying on a repeat schedule, you're still fine. The company will announce uh, earnings in the next two weeks, and I believe in the ramp up to earnings, the price will continue to go up. I actually have calls and puts in both directions. so. I have a call expiring tomorrow on a leverage product called NBDL. And with tonight's action, NVIDIA went up something like six, 7%, which means NVDL went up 14% because it's two times leveraged. So I'm looking forward to seeing NVIDIA continue to go up tomorrow. But if you want more education on leverage products, investments, options, stocks to hold, we called out SoundHound in the Discord. Uh, about a month ago that has gone up tremendous tremendously we've called out palantir since i began the channel that has also gone up tremendously along with asts another great price uh, stock to to buy and in general guys you're missing out on a lot of investment education research as well as a great community of other people who are trying to be the best version of themselves there's a special section of the discord about esoteric and hidden knowledge and i have posted a bunch in there so if you're very curious and you like to learn and you want to know what's really going on in the world you should definitely check out the discord guys so we are back at the car wash in coming auto craze it's going to be a beautiful sunset drive back looking forward to uh capturing some pretty cool views as we chill and ride back. When we get closer to Atlanta, of course, we can open up the car a bit and enjoy. I do have some pretty cool center cap, uh, not center caps, these are valve stem covers. They have the M logo on them, so I can't wait to actually put these on. Little things, guys, little things. <laughs> and of course, I'm sticking to the daily upload schedule. Uh, if I get the car tuned, I should say when I get the car tuned, I think what I'll do is I'll create more videos that are educational, talking about life, talking about careers. And so, you know, for like the 10 days that the car is down, you'll probably see a lot of videos around investing and getting to the next step in your life with relationships and careers. You can always book time with me one on one. I do have life coaching sessions, so definitely check that out. I always link all of my links in the description below, guys. All right. Guys, thinking about the interior of these 2025s, the flat bottom steering wheel is just such a nice touch with the 12 o'clock marker. And these new vents, guys, I didn't realize what was happening because there was no airflow coming out from this vent. But I realized you can actually completely close the air vent by twisting this nipple. <laughs> and it has a nice clicking noise too. So if you turn it to the left and clicks, that's completely closed. Turn it to the right, that opens it up. For anyone wondering why, you know, airflow is not coming through your vents, you gotta just twist the nipples on these new cars. dryer does a pretty good job here guys I'm not gonna lie and there's a beautiful sky in front of us when we get out of here it's gonna look gorgeous For anyone watching the Olympics, let's go USA, come on now. Seems like everyone's having a good time in France. I can't believe Snoop Dogg is over there. He's like our mascot, right? Too funny. He's getting paid big money, guys, big money. One thing I also wanna to talk to you guys about is the possibility if you go into computer science and you have a lot of technical skills of being overemployed. And if you've never heard that term, it means you can hold multiple jobs at once. And you know what? 
in this economy with the way companies treat workers, I don't blame you if that's something you want to do. Especially if you're into a software engineering role and you can work remotely, you can work two or three jobs and really accumulate a lot of income very quickly. And what you have to be careful of is lifestyle creep because when people start making a massive amount of income, we're talking over $300,000 a year, maybe $400,000 a year over three jobs, you know, maybe you think, oh, I can afford another house, I can afford another car. But it's very risky, guys. It's very risky to do this overemployed thing. There's an entire subreddit dedicated to it. And some people have utilized it to escape debt. Some people have utilized it to buy a house. But there are a lot of stories about getting found out. And then, you know, what happens when both of the jobs or three of the jobs find out and you're just, you know, out on the street? A lot of the people that do the overemployed thing, they lock their LinkedIn's or they disable them completely so no one can look them up on LinkedIn. But LinkedIn is actually more important than ever in the job market. It's kind of crazy. It's like a monopoly over uh, available jobs. Many companies post their jobs on LinkedIn. Another thing is that there is a employment verification service called the work number, TWN, and you can freeze your information on TWN as well. So when you get into a job, they usually do a background check and they'll verify where you've worked at. Well, you can say, you know, basically that your information isn't, isn't available, but if you have W-2s, you can present W-2s as proof of employment. And you know, when you work for a company in the US, you get a W-2 at the end of the year for tax purposes. But it's pretty cool, pretty interesting how, how they approach that, guys. And so if, you, if you're wondering how to make more money and you have a computer science background, or even if you wanna do product management, or even a sales role, it's actually a really good opportunity, uh, I think, if you can manage the risks and manage the stress and manage the workload of having two or three jobs, you know, why not go for it? Seriously, why not go for it, you know? There was a story about a guy who actually automated his job with uh, basically a bunch of software, but also he offshored his own job. So he hired a contractor in, let's say, India to do his job for a third of the price, and then he just kept doing that with other jobs. So in a sense, he, he became the employer. So that's also a hilarious kind of arbitrage of employment opportunities and, and people kind of becoming almost like a uh, consulting agency themselves. And you know what, if you grow a big enough network and you've been around for a while, you can always become like a strategic recruiter and you can start you know, linking executives into companies and getting paid for it. When you do join a company, there's usually a referral uh, bonus. So when you have a, a, you know, a good role and, and you want other people to join, you should definitely give them referrals so that you can get paid for when they join. You know, I think that's a, a really good opportunity to make some money too, especially if you believe in the people that you want to refer. I myself got uh, some referrals to Honeywell, Amazon, and Microsoft and Google. And uh, I'm looking to continue the conversation with Honeywell. So that's a big technology company here in Atlanta where they have a whole AI service called The Forge. So I'm looking to see if I can join Honeywell uh, I'd really love to also join another startup, so keep in my, uh, keep in my, my, uh, my perspective open, you know, for, for what comes my way. Personally, I don't think I'm going to do the overemployed thing. It's, it's just so much pressure. And interestingly enough, I have a really cool opportunity for a AI platform that is made specifically for the private equity market and venture capitalists. And uh, I would I would possibly go to Costa Rica for a year, so that would be that would be something, guys. And uh, if I do go to Costa Rica, I wonder like would I be able to drive the car down from the U.S.? I don't know, but we'll figure it out. The future is looking bright, guys. And tomorrow, I'm hoping that Nvidia continues their rally upwards and we hit somewhere between 110 and 115 dollars before the weekend but it's just been so volatile. It's, it's literally swung from $117 to $92, then back up to $108, then back down to $95, $94, and it closed today above $105, $106. So been a crazy week or two, and I think there's definitely market manipulation in, at play. The CEO himself is selling millions and millions of dollars of stock. And uh, you know, there's a little bit of news coming out around their latest and greatest process are having some defects and flaws so it may be pushed back but the demand is still there no one is going to anyone else nvidia really is the top of the 
of the pack when it comes to AI chips and the GPUs. There's also a little bit of uh, antitrust uh, you know, regulation going on against NVIDIA to see if they're a monopoly, especially in Europe, but I don't think that's going to really prevent them or hold them back. What's interesting is Google is actually fighting the US government to uh, basically make sure that it's not a monopoly in the search, uh, search market, but I think Google is going to lose that if they haven't already lost that argument. Interestingly enough, XRP finally settled with the SEC. So XRP is a cryptocurrency and for the longest time the SEC was trying to basically almost undermine them and Trump's, uh, Trump's, I believe it was his treasurer or the head of the SEC right before Trump's term ended, one of the last things the guy did was to try and go after SEC with a, with a settlement, like a lawsuit. And they were basically trying to say that XRP is almost considered like a, a regulated like investment, you know? And institutional investors need to have XRP regulated. Well, I think the settlement says that for individual retail holders, it does not need to be regulated like an institutional asset, but for institutional investors, it does need to be regulated like an institutional asset, which is pretty interesting. Uh, but they have to pay a fine, it's, I think $125 million, or something like that, but it's seen as a win because the settlement is now past them. And I do think XRP has uh, quite some momentum going into the end of the year, into next year, into next year if you're looking to buy a cryptocurrency. So the other day I was driving and a massive rock hit the car and it came from one of these vans with these freaking ladders above it. It hit the roof so we're gonna have to go back to Drew and uh, get the PPF redone on the roof again. It's like the second time in two months. <laughs> but being OCD you know, I just want to get it looking pristine as possible. I saw a movie tonight called Trap with my girlfriend and it's crazy, Josh Hartnett is the main actor, M. Night Shyamalan is the director, and Josh Hartnett hasn't been acting for a long time. I think he was living in the UK, he wanted to kind of lay low. He's a fantastic actor. If you haven't seen Black Hawk Down from the early 2000s, it's a really good movie. One of the movies he like was first appearing in and um, he looks like he hasn't aged, guys. And it was a really good psychological thriller, you know? He's OCD, he's like a serial killer, and, and he's trapped in this concert venue with his daughter who he's taking to see a famous celebrity, you know, a singer like Ariana Grande type. And the FBI is there, SWAT is there, the police, and he has to figure out a way to get out of there. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. It goes into social hacking, which is how do you actually communicate with people, build trust with people, and get past safeguards that normally you wouldn't be able to. And uh, that happens in the real world too. When hackers actually break into company systems, they're generally calling ahead or trying to message someone and socially hack that person by gaining their trust or manipulating them, and that gets them in. It's not always just all technical, you know, programming and hacking into the system. A lot of it is just hacking a person socially. Um, and, and you see that a lot in, in the real world. I think that's what a sociopath is. They, they socially hack people. So you have to be on guard. I've seen a lot of people even in the car world that come and go and, and they just, they use people. And it's crazy. True sociopaths out here. And what I've realized guys is that everyone wants to be part of something bigger. And when people are not on stable ground, they don't have goals and they're kind of all over the place they're very easily manipulated. So you have to be, you have to be so careful, you know what I mean? And that's why it's important to set goals and know, you know, where your solid ground is because then you won't be swayed by people who really are negative, almost demonic forces in life. And I see it way too much, especially in Atlanta with some of the largest car scenes and car clubs. It's just, it's just people playing each other, you know what I mean? The cars get used, the people get used, and in the end you'll go to jail or you might die end up in multiple court cases and for what for a little bit of clout to seek a little bit of group love I mean who cares you know what I mean be your own person and be so careful guys that you don't get used 
And the same thing goes for when you're dating. Be really, really careful about why that person wants to spend time with you, unless you already both know what it is and you're clear with your expectations. When two people are clear about using each other, that's not sociopathic, that's, that's just a transactional relationship, you know what I mean? And when it's clearly defined, then there's not gonna be psychological issues. Coming up on some road pirates for sure up here. We got an IX swerving into our lane, that's always good. <laughs> So right now we're in comfort mode, four wheel drive, valves closed, burble off, and the car is just smooth and quiet as can be. Literally a stock car. What's funny is when I drive this way, the actual gas mileage, <laughs> the, the range goes up. So I started with 270 miles, now I'm at 278. And you can really get 25 miles per gallon out of this car if you just cruise and don't go into boost. When you're in boost and you're driving it hard, you're getting like 14 miles per gallon. It can get, it can get pretty bad. Officer on that side. Let's open it up a little bit. I have put the suspension and the steering back to softer settings, the comfort settings, because Man, it was, it was starting to be jarring how firm the car was, the dampening. And I also have the burbles off to make it clean as possible in terms of exhaust noise. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's what I'm talking about, guys. to drive their car when you can just drive it like that. That's how you drive the car, you know what I'm saying? That's how you drive and drive the car. <laughs>
fast, right around 4,000 RPM in sixth gear, but not too bad. and softer with the comfort suspension settings.
we have some road pirates up ahead. Speed limit sign is kind of obstructed. right there too. Let's see if that means anything up here.